All right, hello everyone. Hopefully we are all set here. No need to be alarmed. Lisa is here. I know we said last week that she probably would not be here, uh, but she is because uh, her veterinarian hurt himself or herself, not sure which one it is, and uh, was not able to do the spaying of the two girls tonight. So, or today, so she's here. However, two minutes before the live stream was to begin, she said, uh-oh, my phone's on 30%. And uh, so she had to run back to the house to get that. And she will be right back. So don't worry. You don't have to tolerate me for the entire uh, hour and a half or so tonight. Audio, video, good. Thank you, Zen Ginger. I see already a lot of votes coming through for plants, meaning that plants are better than non-planted aquariums kind of thought we were going to get that response but we're going to get into that here very shortly uh jeff rose fish keeping is here how about that jeff good to see you uh got a couple of things to update you on first of all i've been talking about it well i gotta i gotta start with something else i've been talking about it for like three months now folks i need to remind you that michael rosenbaum is the best lex luther that's ever been put on film although there is the new guy that's been cast, Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt. It's Holt, right? Not Holtz. I'm a big fan of that guy. Uh, we'll see how he's going to do. But as of right now, Michael Rosenbaum's the best Lex Luthor ever to be put on film. And I'm going to keep saying that until he gets his butt into this live stream and says, hello. That's all he has to say. Hello. And that'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, but <laughs> um, I've been talking about the Tank Talk podcast. I, I kind of start off every episode or every live stream with that. Uh, folks, once again, the response has been absolutely just unthinkable. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, making Mr. Beast nervous for the views <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, but for a, a new style, you know, because it was just me before that, uh, actually, Lisa was a part of the podcast back in like 2015, uh, and then it was just me for the longest time. But now the new version of the Tank Talk podcast with the professor, Jason Adams from Primetime Aquatics, is going so, so well. I am so thrilled with it. And the the response from the audience appears to be the same. And the cool thing is this is kind of nerdy. It's kind of, you know, behind the scenes type inside baseball type stuff, but audio podcasts tend to get significantly fewer views or downloads than the video version. Here is Lisa now. Um, and that is true. It, it's the, the audio versions on your Spotify's and your Apple and your Google's, they tend to, to get significantly fewer downloads you're going to probably have to come over to this side to do that because you're not going to be able to see it uh stick stick the white thing down through the middle so that it can reach or stick the one up through the whatever however you want to do it um and that is the case here too the audio version of the podcast is does not get as many downloads as the video version gets views however i can tell you this all four of the episodes that Jason and I have done together and uploaded together have more than double the average audio download of the, the episodes in the past. So it's been amazing. I knew it as soon as I had that idea that Jason needs to team up with me on this. I knew it would have this effect and, uh, and you are proving me right. And I love being right a little a little uh quote movie quote here trivia for you right off the bat and if i'm wrong and i'm never wrong they're headed for the fire swamp who said that that's that's what i'm asking the audience oh. let me put you on the screen because lisa is here I'm hey here. she's here y'all were nervous and i understand <laughs> uh we did have to reconfigure the cameras again uh, you know listen we're never going to be on the same side. We're always going to be 
you know, when she looks at me, she's going to be looking at me. But when I look at her, I'm looking off screen. It's just going to have to be that way. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for your response to the Tank Talk podcast. We're having so much fun with it. Um, the episode that's coming up on Monday is, is it possible to make money with breeding fish? Breeding for profit. I'm not sure what um, Prince Humperdinck, at a boy, at a at a girl, uh, Ted, at a at a boy, Ted. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that's a man's name there. Uh, yes, it is Prince Humperdinck from the Princess Bride. Uh, I was not doing any giveaways with that. I was just giving you a uh, a little Ooh. a little thing there. Dave You're the not fish as nice dude. As me. Dave the fish dude also got it. Curtis Crump, I believe, was the first to get it. At you a guys. Boy. I would have had you all win a prize for that if, if it was me, but I'm not as nice as you. So what are you going to do? <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you all for that. A uh, little bit of website news. Got two new products that are going to be coming in. Uh, very excited about that. I'm just waiting for my money person to tell me that I can put the order in for it. Uh, very excited about these two new products that we have coming in and Got a nice big fat order of plants today. Uh, if I, I don't think, I don't think we have anything out of stock that is actually available to us. The one of the most sought after plants that we have on our website that I get emailed at, uh, emailed for regularly is the Bucephalandra ketagang. We never have it because Tropica never has it. Um, that's a hard plant, I guess, to, to breed and to, they are very slow growers. So it takes a while to get them up to sellable size. They don't want to sell me plants that are that big, even in, um, tissue culture form. They haven't had those in a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, there might be a, another plant or two that we don't have in stock, but it's because we don't have them available to us. Uh, but everything else we have in stock I think there's one crypt that we might be out of, but again, it's because Tropica doesn't have them for us. If you've been looking for plants, they are in there. We've been out of Rotala for a while um, because Tropica didn't have it available for a while. And then they got it back in and they do everything fair, Tropica. They, everything is done fair. You email in your orders and it is first come, first serve, period. And we lollygagged a couple times. No, no, I misspoke there. I lollygagged yeah. a couple times and uh, got the order in too late and they had run out of Rotala. My fault, but this time it's in and uh, it's it's there. It's ready for you, Rotala, whole bunch of them. So yeah, everything's there. Very excited about that. And I cannot wait to share with you the new products that we have coming in. You look anxious to speak. So huh. you haven't talked yet. So have at it, lady. Well, Dylan asked about my tank. He said week number five of asking about the tank. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. Who said that, Dylan? Yeah. Thank you. And yes, it's done. It's 100% complete oh. on my end. Uh, okay. But yeah. uh, John decided he wants to do the filtration part, so I'm going to let him do it because he really wants to. Uh, I was reading, what did you just say to me? That you really wanted to do the filtration because, you know, you... You've done it so many times. You're like, oh, I'll just knock it out and do a video on it instead of me doing it. So, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> but yeah, the there's water in it. So basically, it's just waiting around now for a few other little things to be done. <laughs> what I told her was, well, it ain't going to take me seven months to do the filtration. Hmm. Well, I just got myself in trouble there. Yes. <laughs> there's been a lot. It's been at least one day, though. There's been a lot of reasons <laughs> why uh, yeah. it's taken so long, and, and it is what it is. But, um, but yeah, I'm actually, my plan is to work on the filtration for that tank this weekend. And one of the big challenges for it is going to be the lights, mm. only because... I don't, yeah, they're going to be coming from the ceiling probably. Well, and that's not hard to do. Uh, hanging lights from the ceiling is easy to do, but your vision, I don't have your vision for the plants that are going on top. Okay. Shh. Um, okay. In the, you know. Yeah. Because you were, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know where you want the lights to I, go. How yeah, about well, that? I will stand there and I will say, I want them there. I want them here. I want them there. I will point to the direction of where I want them. It's okay. not that hard. I'll just tell you what to do. That's you're really good at that. So <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I might even get to that this weekend. I would think that I would. The filtration is something I, I've set up the custom aquariums, seamless sumps three times in in my past uh, and you are actually looking at all three of the tanks right now uh, unless you're listening to this you're if you're watching us you're looking at it because both of the tanks behind my beautiful wife and the tank behind me are all on custom aquarium seamless sump i've done them so many times i could probably do them with my eyes closed however i am going to do this one differently and that i'm going to hard pipe it rather than use the flexible hoses, um, which I haven't done that yet, but I've, I've ran so many plumbing lines. It's ridiculous. Oh it's not gonna, it's, it's probably gonna be easier than, than the others have been. So I'm looking forward to doing that. There will be a video on it. Uh, it'll be a video that'll be going up on a Saturday, not a Sunday video. So um, yeah, you can be expecting some videos on that very, very soon. Uh, the next video on it will be the aquascape, which is done. And then the, I don't think the filtration should be the same video. So the second video or the third in the series will be the filtration. And then we're going to do an entire episode dedicated to the fish. I can't wait for the fish. I was so thrilled yeah. when you asked me about it. Or, or not when you asked me about it, when you told me what you wanted to do with it. Uh, I'm, it's amazing. I can't wait to see that. So it does, <laughs> it deserves an entire video yes. all to itself. I'm excited. So those oh. are coming very soon. Ooh, Vincent asked, did the kitties get a package this week? Yes. Boy, did they. They did. And I'm so glad you asked because I didn't know if I should wait. I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show the book. But I was like, no, I have to wait for my stream and show it on my stream. I try not to show everything on this stream. I, I like to save the good stuff for for my stream. But yes, I got the package in the book. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. You can ask John, I ran in there. I was like, ah, I got a book, it's so cool. And the author, she's adorable and she's got a hoo-hoo tattoo on her arm too. And I'm like, I've got so much in common with this woman. And yeah, I was really excited about that. And I got Jennifer Anderson's package today too. Thank you so much. Y'all are just awesome. Yeah, one of those package I, packages I almost thought was for me, but she was like, nah, it's for dogs or cats. Uh, because of the bed. The bed says <laughs> for dogs, but I knew it was for cats too. That's why I put it on there. So I'm really excited about that. So I have seen in the chat already today, uh, somebody asking, it might be a silly question, but do you ship to South Africa? And then there was also one that asked if we ship to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we do not ship to either one of those. Um, Hawaii and Alaska both were, they, they were just way too difficult. They took way too long and they were way too expensive. It was basically, like we were having to pay the customers to send them stuff in Hawaii and uh, and and Alaska, and you know you can say, well, what about flat rate with the postal service? That's very true. However, the postal service is so unpredictable lately. Uh, it and I, I was losing years off my life depending on them to ship plants. Um, if you've ordered plants from us in the last two weeks, there's a very, very good chance you received your plants from UPS as opposed to the Postal Service. This is a decision I made without consulting my 50% business partner because I knew she was gonna say, duh. Um, we've made the switch for all of our live plants and snails to the Postal Service UPS ground. I, I'm, I just misspoke. We, we changed them all from the Postal Service to UPS Ground. We did not make any adjustments whatsoever to the cost to you, the customer, but we are taking a hit because shipping costs us more now, using it through the UPS. Because UPS is, is a little bit more expensive. It's not like 
the Postal Service is $12 and UPS is $33. It would be like the Postal Service is 12, UPS is 12.75. You know, it's so it's not anything earth shattering. Uh, we're not going to have to eat ramen noodles every night. Oh, I um, like them though. They're so yummy. I do. I eat them a lot. We keep them in the house because I love them and I'm I'll say it to your face, but um but yeah, we've done that simply for the reliability that we can count on them getting to you when they're supposed to. However, there are certain places uh, like our California customers, uh, the whole West Coast, basically. Sometimes UPS ground is like six days. So, you know, the Postal Service is still saying two days. So, you know, we we will still go with the Postal Service there. Um, but if it is a two day shipment through UPS ground, we're going UPS from this point on. And the nice thing is a lot of places like Southern Virginia, uh, Eastern Tennessee, Northern South Carolina, uh, and all of North Carolina, Jerry Goble is a great example of this. Um, a lot of times you'll get the stuff the next day. We ship on Tuesday, you'll get it Wednesday. And that's not because we're paying extra for that. That's just what UPS does. So anyway, um, the only reason I'm talking about that is because I was asked about shipping to South Africa as well as uh, Hawaii. And I, unfortunately, we can't do either one of those because they just cost too much money. And shipping to South Africa, that would be, <laughs> I can't even uh, imagine how yeah. much that would cost. I have to talk to Elon since he's from oh, there. I have to maybe answer a question. Me. Mr. Skippity Doodah, that's Dave. Um, he asked, Lisa, did you get the kitty treats? And I did. I showed them on last week's stream. Yep. Yeah, they oh, they love them. Those are like amazing. I'm, I actually want to order them because they're good. They love them. Jennifer Anderson said, yes, UPS rocks. Customers will pay for quality service and quality product. You know what? I probably could have raised our prices on shipping by a dollar and nobody would have ever said anything but i'm just not going to do that i mean again it's not such an outrageous cost difference a lot of times the cost difference is like 50 cents you know so sure we're still if you're shipping out 125 orders that day you know 50 cents for each one adds up but i'm willing to do that simply to be able to sleep better at night yeah. And to know that our customers are not going to be sent their order on Monday and not get it till the following Tuesday, which is what the Postal Service was doing to the, us I know, it's quite regularly. So I got snails sent back after a month. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. I was like, and the thing is, the person that ordered them didn't even say they didn't get it. So I didn't know. Yes, they, did. they did? Yeah. And I sent her another one. Oh. I, I, this email, this customer emailed and said the package is lost. And I looked at it and it, it was in fact oh, lost. Yeah. And uh, I uh, shipped her another one and it got to her. So she ordered one, I shipped it and then shipped her another one, which got to her and was in her tank before the other one even got back to us. So, oh, yeah. Okay. It, I was, was confused because I, I was like, I don't remember hearing about us you know, hearing about that situation. So you took care of it with that. I me. took care of it. I always do. How do you guys sell the plants on our website? It is keep Uh, that is where we sell them. They're all on there. We sell the, the best plants on the planet from Tropica, the largest producer of tropical plants for the aquarium hobby on the planet. You don't get there by selling a bad product. So there you go. Uh, want to mention uh, there was something funny noticed before the stream started uh melissa jeswald this one's not funny oh. uh but we love melissa jeswald yes. so i just finished my aquascape on my future Yay. shrimp tank thank you kgt for the plants 10 gallon fluorite driftwood and i need more plants we always need more plants if you have the patience though melissa the ones that you bought you know they'll spread out and oh, you yeah. can propagate them and i don't remember the plants she bought maybe you might not be able to cut them and you know plant them somewhere else's but uh we'll see uh but yeah you know have the patience and they'll all grow out but if you need more plants i know a great place that you can get them this is the funny one though uh <laughs> finsanity aquatics and i'm gonna have some explaining to do on this one he said hey john i have an algae problem 
I bought the filter from Corey, plants from KJE, lights and substrate from PetSmart, and shrimp and snails from Flip. What should I do? <laughs> That's hilarious. The first thing I thought, or what I was suggesting was, well, maybe you should contact one of them <laughs> and this light and, and it's not working. You know, I've still got this algae bloom. And so my response to him, because Joe and I go back and forth and I like to break his balls. I said, so Corey's filter isn't keeping up with your tank. And so you emailed me about it. <laughs> and then I followed that up with, I'm just kidding. And then I gave him some advice on it. And, uh, that's he funny. responded with, I should have seen that coming, but that's all fun. And, uh, and I, I was joking with him, but it is true. Well, because the, people will message that they, because they watch the video about the title filter, want to ask you questions. Or want me to help them with their warranty. But they bought it on Amazon. Like what? That's yeah. just rude. Are you going to call Amazon and ask them for help with a filter you bought from us? <laughs> it, it does happen all the time. And, you know, we can't stop people from doing that. Uh, but when it's somebody that I've had a lot of communications with and someone who wore our merch oh. on his wedding ceremony. Oh, I wasn't saying that towards uh, No, I know that. Joe. <laughs> when it's somebody that, that we have that kind of a relationship with, I'm going to take that opportunity to break their balls about it. But, uh, but yeah, that does happen if you're in a situation. And, and the thing is, the algae bloom is not, the, the filter is not to blame for that algae bloom. I mean, so that's why it was funny. Uh, it has nothing to do with the filter itself. It has to do with the imbalance in the tank. We all know where, well, Joe doesn't know. Now he knows, but yeah. he didn't know before where uh, a, a algae bloom comes from or potential bacterial bloom. Uh, so, you know, I had to fill them in on some of those things. Yeah. So that's what's made it funny is that it's not the filter's fault anyway. But I kind of made it that kind of an issue. Anyway, <laughs> um, I worked with Nicholas Beast on X-Men and he's amazing. What? You worked on the X-Men movie, Jennifer? What? Uh, is because he... Secretly, really, Jennifer Aniston? <laughs> well, we met her in person. We verified that. Uh, okay, um, Jennifer, Jen, I'm going to need a little bit more information then, please. Uh, and I'm also going to need his number. And No, I'm kidding. But uh, he was, Nicholas Holt was a guest on uh, Inside of You. And it was a really, really good episode because he's playing the future Lex Luthor. They're shooting now. And then Rosenbaum played... Lex, the best Lex to ever be put on film. And so that was a good listen. But I need more information, Jen, because uh, I didn't know you worked in the movies. Yeah. But she does live in Georgia. They do a lot of filming in Atlanta. Oh. So makes sense, actually. A lot she of. She said, yes, I did. X Men First Class. Wow. That is so cool. Did, did, uh, what did you do for the movie there, please? I'd, I'd love to. That's just fascinating to me. That's and if really I knew cool. that, I would have probably driven you crazy because I'd have been like, did you talk to Patrick Stewart? How is Hugh Jackman? Like, I'd have, I'd have drove you nuts. You probably would have regretted uh, telling me that you did that. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay, I, where was I at? And what we're going to do here, folks, we are going to spend some time talking about uh, plants versus no plants. And then it's going to be up to you. You are going to lead the discussion here. Uh, if you see my beautiful wife staring down at her phone, she's not being rude. She is in there talking to you in the chat. So uh, you, can, you can easily get a response from her by text. And you see her typing it by on text. text. <laughs> That's the same as getting a response from us here vocally. Psst, did y'all hit the like? And I bet, uh, oh, wait, it just... For some reason, I can't see it. YouTube blurred out the last part of that, Zen. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was that you were trying to say there, but YouTube apparently felt that it was inappropriate for the chat. So Really? Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't uh, see it. Leslie Perry, first time I tried plants, I proudly posted a pic on Facebook and everyone said, get those silver dollars out of there. Live and learn. Silver. 
Well, you know what? Oh, uh, Dollar Jam. Facebook is a dark, terrible place for a lot of things. She was a production assistant. But in that situation, oh, they I'm were right. Write that down. Wow, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, you you might not want to come to Daytona then, Jen, because I'll be picking your brain about all those people, uh, because there's so many. Yeah, that's that's really cool that you did that. Um, but yeah, they gave you good advice there, Leslie Perry. Uh, yeah, those silver dollars will definitely tear them up. Uh, Bogdana Truitt, I have the worst luck with tea, any kind of moss. All moss dies. The rest of the plants are flourishing. I have no idea why. Huh. Well, moss lady. I mean, I don't have problems with moss, though. I just... It's usually the opposite problem. Yeah, I would just stick it in there and it grows. And I mean... I have to use a certain amount of light, um, but if I don't use enough light, it doesn't grow and it will die off. Like my shrimp tank that I did the moss wall on, it was growing so good. It was, it was growing out a lot towards the light, but then behind it wasn't getting the light and that started dying off. So then when I went to go trim, it all came off. And now I, I'm going to have to redo it. And I'm going to have, I'm going to learn from that experience to keep it trimmed back way sooner so that it doesn't get to the point to dying off behind it because the light's not getting to it. So I guess that's my advice. Keep it low and that way the light can hit it because it will die off. You know, the part that's not getting the light is going to die off. And also... I like to think about moss in nature. Moss is in very well lit areas. Sometimes it's in the, uh, in the shade too, but it's also, you see a lot of it growing in not the most high flow areas because the water flowing by doesn't give it an opportunity to stick, I guess. I don't know. When you, when you look at my pond, I've got moss growing on my pond, uh, which is finally coming to life now that the weather's been in the 60s. The koi are eating again. The goldfish are eating again. They're up and they're they're loving the fact that it's it rained like crazy over the last 24 hours. And we got like an, a bonus couple inches of water in the pond. And they are loving that. Um, but you don't typically see it in the super high flow areas, more the lower flow areas in the pond, which it has grown naturally. Yes, when we built it, Jim was here. We picked off moss from my, my trees on my property and we kind of planted that in certain areas of the pond to get it started and those areas have grown but more areas have just spawned moss out of nowhere it's really oh, yeah. really cool i love it i keep moss and just like on the on the um what do you window call sill. that window sill i keep two little i guess they're vases they're kind of like fancy faces like bowls and stuff but they're not huge they're probably maybe a gallon maybe not even that like yeah. a half a cup water <laughs> and cup. moss in both of them well the one has a few other plants in it i think like uh maybe a crypt and moss but it's just not anything in particular like i didn't do escape of it i had actually just thrown it in there because i didn't want it to die after i had done escape so i i was like, oh, I'm going to stick it in this vase and with water so it doesn't die and I'll use it later. Well, then it ended up growing real pretty in there. I even, I posted a picture of it on Instagram. And then I added some of my cherry shrimp to both of them because. Th why not? Why not? I got <laughs> so many cherry shrimp and they've been on that windowsill for like, I don't know, four or five months with no filter, no heater, no nothing. And they just eat the moss and they love it and yeah i haven't lost one probably will need to to move them here when the weather really breaks because they will boil uh oh, and wow. with the shrimp that could be a problem uh i'm not a fan of boiled shrimp you know oh uh, melissa just Jeswald asked do you heat your shrimp bowls uh no my shrimp bowls that i have in the um in the beta house well the fish house on the other side the room is heated though to 78, 
but the bowl, one of the bowls, the one that Diana did is in the window. So it gets direct sunlight. That's the only light it gets. That thing is growing just, I'm constantly having to pull some of the top floating plants out because they grow so much. And I just add water to it and the shrimps, they just, they're growing and breeding. Then my bowl that I have on my, on my table in the middle of the fish room, uh, the five gallon one, I have blue dreams and cherry, cherry, red cherry shrimp. Both of those are in there and they're breeding. I've got the little teeny babies and no, neither one of them have an actual heater or filter. So just the plants. And I only feed it like maybe once every three days, very sparingly. You know, I wanted to mention something uh, before I get to this next comment here. Uh, and, and it's basically getting started on the topic of the day. But um, I have found myself watching obsessively the Florida Exotic Fish Sales channel. Um, sure, maybe I'm a little biased because we've bought quite literally thousands of fish from that place. You are looking right now at a tank behind Lisa. All those pretty little yellow fish, they all came from there. They have their own YouTube channel. Um, but I, I've known them for as long as we've been in this business. And uh, Rick Biro, the founder of Florida Exotic Fish Sales, has confirmed that he will be our first guest, our, our first live guest on the Tank Talk podcast, which I am so excited about. Uh, that's going to be recorded in Dallas at Aquashella, and I don't even know when that is, but uh, he's going there. We're going to spend some time with Rick, and folks, I got to tell you, it, if, you, if you know the name Rick Biro, you're going to associate that name with African cichlids. And that's understandable. But if you're interested in aquariums, you're going to want to listen to that episode, possibly two episodes, because Rick is a guy that talks even more than I do. And when you get him going, you ain't going to stop him. And I'm going to tell you this right now, when he starts talking about him and his brother, you know, setting up their thing and starting their business in the 70s, in the early 70s, in their college apartments, I'm not going to interrupt. I'm just going to sit there and listen. And so it might go so long that we have to break it apart into two episodes. Hey, that's a bonus for us. And here's another thing that I learned. His wife, Tamala, who we've known as long as we've known him, uh, she is reluctant, which I have a problem. I'm going to have to call her tomorrow and yell at her because I've been watching their videos She's in their videos and she's great. She specializes in a lot of the Tanganyikan cichlids, uh, shell dwellers, stuff like that, which Jason is nuts over. Uh, she is key in the development of those fish in this hobby. So she's a, an authority on shell dwellers and Tanganyikans and stuff like that. And when I was talking to them yesterday and we were talking about Rick being a, a, a guest and all of that and I was like, well, I'd love to have Tamala on too on a completely separate episode. And she was like, oh no, I'm too nervous. I don't know that I could do that. Lady, I've seen you on the videos <laughs> on that YouTube channel and she's great. I don't know what she's talking about, about being nervous. No, I'm going to beg her to also be a guest on the podcast. It's going to be amazing. She's so awesome. And that's going to be Jason and I sitting with them in person. This isn't going to be done remotely or anything like that. So that makes it that much better. I cannot wait for that. Uh, and if you're, if you love watching people who are really good at their job, do their job, uh, watch the Florida exotic fish sales YouTube channel. That it's, is, it's awesome. That's like a dream job. It really is. And when I was watching some of their videos today, because spoiler alert, I stole a couple of clips from their videos to use in my video for Sunday. Um, I was watching it and I was like, oh, that's the dream. How amazing would that be? I'm sure Rick would say, are you crazy? You want to, you dream about this? Because when, once you're doing it, you always look at things like that that way. But I look at that and say, wow, that would be incredible. Going to a vet, taking a big net, a net this yeah. big, 
running it through that vault and coming up with 350, you know, pseudotrophias or something in there. It, it, like, are you kidding me? That would be absolutely heaven. Uh, one of the videos he was scooping up uh, electric blues, which he refuses to call to call electric blue Ali's. He calls them electric blues. And so I'm going to start calling them electric blues now because I listen to Rick. Um, some of the most amazing fish you'll ever see. Those you'll see in the video on Sunday, but watch his channel. Really, really cool. Uh, any fish keeper would be interested in, uh, in in that channel. It's just really, really cool. And it, it's cool, fascinating, not just for people who love African cichlids. Anybody that's interested in tropical fish will love to hear Rick's stories oh, yeah. and how he does things and all of that. I can't wait to hear all the things he has to say on the podcast. I had fun when we went to um, De the De Mason. Yep. Place. Leif um, De Mason. Leif De Mason. Uh, that was cool because he had that waterway with the bridge, and I sat down and I put my feet in there, and the and the the fish nibble. They at were your little toes. baby doe eyes. They're so cool. <laughs> yeah, that that place is a fantasy land, and. You know, I've been saying it, and maybe we can figure out a way to make it happen uh, for Daytona this year. I don't know, but I need to get down there to that farm. I really do. I might just not come home. So you might have to start cutting the grass because I might not come home from that. I can that. do that. <laughs> X. Oh, boy. I need to get my eyes fixed. This is getting embarrassing. X. Mechix. Yeah, I'm sorry. Said it. Said it wrong, but uh, kind of brings us on to our topic here today, plants or no plants. Um, this question is CO2 injection or not? Thank you for not putting nah. Remember when that was a thing? Nah. Do you like that or nah? Oh, I used to gosh. hate that. Which do you prefer and why? So here's the thing. I'm not an expert on CO2. Um, I'm not an expert on plants yet. I'm really good with them and we are doing some great things with them. I've learned so much over the last three years. Um, I've but, learned to not kill them. <laughs> right. That was the first hurdle that we had to get over. Yeah. Um, one of the things though that I have learned is so far in my plant journey, this is just me because she hasn't even tried it yet. But just me, I haven't noticed a benefit from CO2. Now, I put a CO2 system on our plant tanks in our barn. The, that we, the, We've doubled the amount of tanks that we have now. But um, the tanks that we have our plants in that we sell out of, I put them in there. I didn't notice a difference. And it's not the CO2's fault. It's, not, it's just the plants come in and they go out so fast that there just wasn't any benefit. Um, and I actually, I, I took the system off because I'm like, I'm not gonna go and every month and a half or so, whatever it is, and refill this cylinder of CO2 if I'm not seeing any benefits from it. With that said, I have indeed used CO2 on hobby tanks too, back at the old house. Uh, a couple of different tanks and there too I didn't notice any benefits I was very very early on in my plant journey at the time I probably did it wrong I probably had too much co2 in there I don't know the fish weren't dying it was on a beta tank but it just the uh, the tank just fell apart it, algae everywhere it was a nightmare are you talking about the one I went pop I eventually did pop it yeah, yeah. It, that did happen uh, glad you remember that. Thank you. That's the only thing I remember of that <laughs> tank and the CO2 you put on it. It went pop. It was one of the, the fluval systems, not fluval's fault. It was this guy's fault. It was definitely your fault. I did you, it wrong. You and cranked it up too high. Yeah, and it, it popped. It was very startling. Uh, it sounded like a gunshot, but uh, nobody was hurt. The fish was okay. Everything was fine. But even in that tank, I, I actually, there I should not have had CO2 in that tank. The only reason I put it in there is because Chris Lukup told me I should. I'm not saying Chris Lukup is wrong. He's much more of an authority than I am, but it was a disaster. I was not happy with that. Uh, so 
in my limited experience, I have not seen a benefit with CO2. Now, I'm also not keeping or selling plants that the label says CO2 required. There's very few plants that say that, but like the advanced category plants and stuff like that, some of them will say, you know, CO2 recommended. I know CO2, you know, all plants will benefit from CO2. Some plants will grow completely differently if there is CO2 and they'll grow faster, they'll grow fuller, brighter. But to me, if the tank is set up right, and again, this is just in my limited experience, if the tank is set up right with the right nutrient levels, the right fertilizer if necessary, the right lighting, the right conditions, you shouldn't need CO2. So um, I'm just going to call you X because I don't know what that name means. Um, that's my answer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what better way of saying it. If you are growing plants right now and your plants are growing, you're having to trim them back. They look nice and they're full. Um, you know, don't mess it up by adding something else to it. Keep it the way it is. Be happy with what you've got. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully that helps. I don't know. Um, but for me, if I had something that was going well and I was like, well, if I had CO2, it'll be better. I'm going to have to weigh the options. The amount of money that it costs to get into CO2, unless you're going to use the new Fluval system, which we still, I'm sorry, Jonathan, we still have not hooked up. Um, that's going to be way, a, a way, way cheaper barrier of entry into CO2. That might be completely worth it. But to get a regulator and go buy the tank and to do all of that, it, uh, you know, maybe, maybe buy a better light. Mighty Mike said, dirted substrate and sand and you won't need CO2. You know what? I have found that to be 100% true. Yep. It's the truth. It is. When we asked Diana about CO2, she was like, what? <laughs> do they inject CO2 into the river? No. Well then, okay. There's your answer. Uh, Diana is a very common sense type woman and I love that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm for me, I'm probably not going to suggest getting CO2. Matthew Woodring asked, uh, what do you all recommend for fertilizer for aquatic plants? And I answered in chat, I said fish poop because I do believe that. I honestly believe a hundred percent fish poop, fish food that feeds fish for them to poop it is great fertilizer i do understand that some people you know they might need a little extra help like your amazon swords sometimes they need some root tabs and i get that but if you have it planted like mike was saying um darted substrate with a sand cap not you don't have to do that but that is a wonderful way to have your plants grow and thrive without fertilizers and all that. I mean, if you have your Anubias or your Java fern, something that doesn't have um, roots that are in the substrate, then yeah, a liquid fertilizer would be good, but I would use a very bare minimum of it so you don't go crazy with algae and stuff. Um, but that's, that's all I would recommend as far as for a fertilizer, um, a liquid fertilizer for plants that don't have their roots inside, the, you know, down in the substrate. But the stuff that's down in the substrate, unless it's like Amazon sword, if you just got your regular stuff like your Rotala and your... Um, Crips and Bacopa. Yeah, all that easy stuff. You don't need root tabs or anything. You just need fish poop. Let me tell you why what she's telling you is significant and why you can believe this woman. We sell four different types of liquid fertilizers and two different brands of root tabs. And she's telling you, hey, you don't always need them. There are some situations some where situations, you may. Some situations, yeah, like hard to grow plants that are not, not so much hard to grow, but the ones that really thrive on your, um, on fertilizers, like, like I was saying, your Amazon swords. Some people need to do that because they need that extra um, 
nutrients and stuff to to make them grow or else they their growth is stunted they, they won't grow big like you see them when you first get them out of the store they'll they'll grow skinnier and they'll be shorter you know so sometimes you do need root tabs but i don't use root tabs in any of my planted aquariums yeah i mean it, it so many things in aquariums are uh, a it, well almost everything is a case by case basis we had it all is. that drama way back about water changes or no water changes uh jason and i actually did a, an episode of tank talk about it which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks um and you know it's completely based on your situation your tank what plants yeah, you have what fish you have you may need liquid fertilizers you may need root tabs but in a perfect situation, in a perfect world, you wouldn't. You know, if the tank is set up right and you have everything in there that the plants need, you shouldn't need those. And, not and only that's that, just us being honest. We want you to buy the stuff, but we don't want you to buy it if you don't need it. Well, and, and also if you're starting an aquarium and it's, you're starting it planted because <clears throat> you want a nice planted aquarium, well, do that first. Grow your plants. Take your time. Let your tank get established without thinking so much, oh, I want to shove a fish in there right away. Watch your aquarium grow. Watch the plants grow. And you know, the cool thing is, I, I've got so many uh, aquariums in here and I don't know if, if my snails fly. I don't know <laughs> what they do, but I always know when it's, become established because the snails will start showing up in there and i'm like oh that's kind of cool must have been from maybe the substrate i took from another tank to get it started or something but i just i let the tank grow in first and become its own little ecosystem before i even add the fish because then you're worried then you can worry about the fish first worry about the plants growing and you'd be surprised how and that's fast why fish poop. It doesn't matter. You're not going to hurt your fish by adding fish poop from another tank that, you know, taking it from another tank, take all their fish poop, add it in there. And your there's your fertilizer. Will, there's your <laughs> fertilizer without the fish. And then it ends up cycling anyways. And you have a beautiful planted aquarium. So, all right. Sorry to keep in our. No, hey, I love it when you do that. Uh, I don't love it when you interrupt me, but I love it when you talk more than me on a topic um what the heck was i gonna say oh you'd be surprised too at how quickly plants rebound how quickly they grow it's it's kind of wild we have this well i mean I, I guess it's a routine we ship plants monday tuesday wednesday we don't ship thursday or friday because we don't want them getting stuck over the weekend with whatever shipper that we use and so we usually get our shipments of plants either Wednesday or Thursday from Tropica almost every week. And so I'll put them in as soon as we get them. I'll put them in the tanks. She'll help me a lot of times. And they'll look kind of like, well, they just got shipped internationally. <laughs> you know, they'll be kind of like, uh, uh, like all bunched up and they're not happy because they've been jammed in there. And I'll, I'll put them in. I don't like open them up or you know mess with them or anything i put them in straight out of tropica sends them in these little sleeves individual little sleeves and i'll take them out and just put them into the tanks we we keep our plants now immersed uh, because that's how tropica does it and that's how we found our best success giving you the best product is to keep them immersed so we'll put them in there and I, every day we'll spray them uh, with water to keep them hydrated and all that they're in water the roots are in water but to spray the leaves and stuff like that um tropica does that their whole greenhouse has an automated misting system that when the humidity gets to a certain level it automatically mists and you know we ain't got that but we just go in there manually and spray them you'd be shocked at how they transform just from thursday to like saturday when we go in there to spray them and we lift up the polycarbonate lids and they're already like, like they've just exploded in there. It's, it's wild how fast that happens. So it's not, plants grow faster than fish. And you know, you put plants in there, certain plants, not all of them, Anubias grows really slow. 
Um, Bacopa grows fast, but not like lightning fast, not like Rotala. You put Rotala in and it's like, oh my, what happened? All of a sudden I've got this jungle in my tank. It's amazing. Water Sprite does that. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, <laughs> but it, it happens really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she has a tank behind me over here that y you can't see right now that every time I come into here, I'm like, whoa, like it just, the plants look bigger and bigger and more full. They're all the way up to the top of oh, that 125. One, I'm constantly propagating, like I'll cut and then I'll transfer it somewhere else. And I've been moving things around and it's just, it's and it's happening floating. so fast. Yeah. And I'm, that's just wanna, with a sand substrate. Yeah, it's just a sand, sand substrate. And I'm going to add some more substrate to it because it's not, in my opinion, I don't think it's thick enough. And it needs more substrate because those roots are going to eventually run out of room. So <laughs> I need more substrate. And the fish are so happy. And the plants are just... What? You got four boxes of substrate sitting over there that you didn't use in your yeah, tank. Yeah, four saying. over there, and then there's uh, three more over there. Oh, I've didn't see those. So many. So I think I'm going to rescape my six tens. Uh, I have a scape in the fifteen I want to do, and then I have the two um, fifteen gallon columns I'd like to scape. These are primarily just snail tanks too and, and guppy fry tanks yeah i've got so many you know i finally stuck some guppies in uh one of my other little nano tanks today i was like eh, <laughs> might as well needs baby you, guppies <laughs> you have them in abundance <laughs> they're everywhere so but there was a question uh jonathan clinker asked uh ever have reptiles we personally have not have reptiles but i i do have a grand gecko Two grand geckos. I have two grand geckos. One of them, though, only has one eye now. And the other one bit me. The albino one only has one eye now because uh, my daughter didn't know that that the way the albino shed is a, a little different than the other one. And she didn't catch it in time. And she took him to the veterinarian. And they had to remove where it didn't come off. And the eye had to be taken out. She felt so bad, but it, it was a learning lesson. But I, I am thankful she took him to get treatment. But she feels so bad about that. I babysat that gecko when they went somewhere. I don't that know. wasn't the other one. That was. Um, it was Laszlo. Was Laszlo, but the albino one is in Laszlo. Oh, well, I wanted so badly for that gecko to be my friend. Um, but he didn't like me. He bit because me. Because you reached in. At, like, I didn't know that I couldn't. I, you know, they, they, like, ah. they didn't tell me. They just gave him to me and said, okay, here you go. He's your problem now. And I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> I went in there and I was, I was trying to be his best friend and he bit me and it hurt my feelings because I wanted to, wanted to hold him and be his best friend, but didn't work. Hip hop hillbilly. Are Harlequin Rasboras known to carry anything they're immune to, but betas are weak to have lost two betas, no rip, no nips, but rasboras and water are fine. Har Harlequin rasboras are one of the fish that we always recommend to go with I've, betas. Yeah, I've had them in uh, beta sororities before. Yeah, so no, not to my knowledge. Uh, but here's the thing. Here, here's the weird thing. How many times have you gone to a public function and then you find out half the people at that place got sick but you didn't and you're like who dodged a bullet there well how come you didn't get sick yeah you're in better shape you didn't go around the wrong people you didn't eat that particular thing or whatever it is you know whatever the circumstances are immune you, systems are different right and immune systems are different you know so it, it's all a matter of circumstances um, betas, you know, I, I don't know where your betas came from. I don't know if they came from us. Uh, we haven't sold them in a while, but um, you, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know where, how their immune systems are. You don't know how they were taken care of before you got them. Right. So it's not uncommon to get sickly betas right now, um, particularly, you know, depending on where you buy them from. So it could be that the betas were just weak already and then 
the stress of being in a new tank and the Harlequins are, are all over the place and maybe stress them out a little bit and, and it just didn't work out. Um, I would, I would try hip hop anonymous. I would try, hip -hop, uh, hip hop anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I would try buying a beta from a, a reputable source, uh, a prism betas, something mm -hmm. like that. Pay the extra money, get yeah. that value because they're going to come from hardier stock. They're going to be beefier. You know, you get what you pay for, even when it comes to betas. So she, you know, and the thing about prison betas, the reason why I've recommended her before over anybody else is because I know how she takes care of her betas. It's very similar to how I have here, you know, with your individual containers. They're not in a cup sitting around waiting for somebody to buy them and then put in a bag and sent to you. She actually takes care of her betas. So, yep. I Worth have, the money. Yeah. Doxy, um, Doxy Diane said, I have heavily gravel planted KG Tropicals plants and not disturbing them unless vacuuming, vacuuming, they are now growing out of control. That's right. You don't, you don't vacuum the substrate. You let that poop and food get down in there and fertilize those plants. So. And see, that is when we talk about planted versus non-planted, what is best, that, that tells you right there. You, you have fish that are in your aquarium right now. I mean, almost everybody I know that gets an aquarium gets them for fish. They don't want just a glass box full of water. I suppose there are some people that just appreciate plants and don't care about I have fish stuff and like that. yeah, I mean, yeah, those people are rare, but you even somebody that like a Jeff Miyake who's completely obsessed over plants is still going to want to have fish in there to complement the whole and thing, to fertilize the right the plants. But you have these fish, this tank behind me, both tanks behind her. Uh, a shame we don't have any planted tanks behind us to talk to go along with this conversation, but. You know, these heavy hitters that are in here and all the dogs that are in the tanks behind her, they're constantly producing that waste and there's nothing to combat it. If you have those plants in there, plants are not a fix all. I don't care what other people say. When you have a lot of fish in a tank, they're not going to be a complete fix all. They're going to take care of everything. You know, a, a planted tank that's set up a certain way will definitely do better with that. But you'd you have something in there now that's going to take that waste and benefit from it rather than that waste just sit there and rot and foul up the water which makes you have to do more water changes planted tanks require far less maintenance if any yes there are those father fish situations where there are tanks diana wallstead tanks that aren't going to require water changes at all just top offs yeah. I mean, even like my bowls and stuff, I do still take water out and add more water. I just don't vacuum the substrate. I don't do it that often. You vacuum it's the substrate. A, it's a balance. If, you're, if you have a lot of fish in the tank and they are pooping and they are messy eaters and the little morsels of food are going down there and you don't have bottom feeders to clean all that up, that is, that's your root tabs. That is going to provide your plants with that, those nutrients. So you wouldn't dare vacuum the substrate. You're going to rob the plants of all of that. So, you know, a, a, a planted aquarium, this doesn't mean a 29-gallon aquarium with eight, 18 harlequin rasboras and 12 angels in it, which tank's not big enough for that, but that has one Anubius in it. Oh. We're not having the same conversation. Uh, first of all, Anubius is not going to benefit from fish waste in the substrate because you're not going to bury those in the substrate. Right. But so Anubius, let's change it to one crypt. Yeah. The You got angels and harlequins in a 29 gallon tank with one crypt in there. It's That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a full complement of plants. Doesn't need to be one of those where you can't see anything but plants, but a moderately planted aquarium. I'm not even going to give you a number because it's impossible to say how many plants that is. But that is going to be a tank that requires far less maintenance than this tank does or okay. either of those tanks behind her does. Uh, or even that exact same tank without the plants. 
because you don't have anything that's going to do anything with that waste and with that uneaten food in your aquarium. We all know, we learned this day one, when you got home and you decided you wanted an aquarium and you watched our video, the most important aquarium video ever made, you learned right then and there that fish poop and, fi and uneaten fish food is a fish killer. We all know that. And so to be able to have something in there that is going to help to combat that, it's a no-brainer that an a planted aquarium is better. However, if you don't have plants, you need to clean it. <laughs> you do, but then there's also situations like Jen had with her silver dollars, like I would have if I put plants in any of the tanks that you're looking at right now. Except like pothos or monsteras where you're putting the roots down in. We're not talk we're talking about plant what are you doing, lady? But that's not planted in the substrate. It's it's an outside of the aquarium plant. But even the and bonus would nibble on those roots. I have I have pothos coming out of the goldfish tank, and they don't do anything to it. They're not in bonus. They're goldfish. It doesn't matter. You want to try it? Because I'll try it. <laughs> it's almost happening right now as we speak. Because I gave them broccoli. I'm not taught. No, because <laughs> there's the pothos are hanging down and almost going in the tank. Oh, which, yeah. Which is beautiful. I love that. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about you're planting a bunch. If I planted a bunch of rotala in any of these three tanks right now, whatever money I spent on those Rotala was, I could have probably flushed it and would have had a better experience because some it people, will be gone. Some people are very successful with like your coffee folia, Anubias and like Embuna tanks and African cyclo tanks. Some those, people, those are more rigid and, a, and not probably as they're easy. They're almost like plastic. They're so thick. Yeah. I mean, they're almost like the pleco of plants. They have a suit of armor on. But most of your plants, your crypts, your stem plants, you plant them in an African cichlid tank, there's a very, very good chance they're not going to be in there very long. So, you know, you don't have that option. Sure, you could put plastic plants in there, but I'm going to tell you, first of all, you're not going to have the same benefits <laughs> as you would plant, uh, live plants. But if I put, if I, if I went to somewhere and bought a whole assortment of plastic plants and I put them in this tank, within 12 hours, all of those plants would be floating at the surface because the Oscars would just dig them up. It would be like, oh, you put toys in here for us. Thank you. Instantaneous they would do that. Uh, they would do that whether it's live plants or artificial plants. So there are a lot of situations where you just cannot do live plants. And for those, you got no choice. You're the one that's going to be handling those nitrates, not the plants. So um, the, the planted aquarium wins the argument every single time, unless it's a situation like the three tanks you're looking at right now where it's not even an option. Sure, build a refugium, do all of that. But that's not the same conversation. That's, I'm talking about building a, or setting up a planted aquarium because it's beautiful and it looks nice. I think refugiums are a great idea and that's something that I've, I've been wanting to, I've been talking about doing for like a year. It's I a great idea. It's a different scenario though, because you don't see them. I mean, unless you set it up in a way where you can see, Oh, but, that's but who the, does that? But that's not the point. <laughs> so, okay. Wingmaster Supreme Forever asked, have you ever used Alocasia in your tanks? And that would be a no. Um, I have a bunch of them, but I have not used them in my tanks. Um, I have used them in pots and put them around uh, like the pond. I've, I, I love doing that. I've sat them, I've actually had them sitting in the pond before last year before which ones I, are those uh you know the one i have i have them all over the house they're just different kinds all right <laughs> like okay so the one that's in the dining room sitting on the one chair that's really tall shooting out like towards the window okay and i have a bunch of different kinds of them too but um I, I've never put them in a fish tank like I would a patho or monstera. I want to say real quick that Bloodscreen and Sean Russell, I'm still not sure if I'm saying your name right, 
gifted memberships. Thank you all so much for that. One from Blood Screen and, uh, and five from Sean. Very much appreciated. Those six people are going to now have access to the extra videos yes. that we put up every Sunday. Uh, Reese Jones, thank you all for your videos, guys, from the UK. I only started the hobby last year, and your videos have been so useful and informative. Well, Very thank nice. you. That is uh, never gets old hearing that. I appreciate it, and I'm glad that we were able to help. That's amazing. Uh, aquarium background tape for Pie Wacket. Miss you, buddy. You know anything about that? Yeah, you talked about it last week. Is that a... Yeah. Oh, a furry friend that he lost? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's brutal. He has short-time memory loss. Sorry. I do. It's really bad. I've got way too many things going through my brain. Sean came in again and said, John, oh, this is right up my alley. Who is the best Superman on film? A uh, hundred times out of a hundred, that is Christopher Reeve, and it's not even close. Um, a big Henry Cavill fan. I'm a, I'm a fan of everybody... Uh, that has played Superman, Dean Cain, um, Tyler Hecklin, Brandon Routh, Henry Cow, all of them. Mm. Uh, but it's always going to be Christopher Reeve for me. The Richard Donner uh, directed Christopher Reeve, Gene Hackman, 1978 Superman. Uh, that is what made me a Superman fan. Uh, so Christopher Reeve will always, he's my Superman. <laughs> and uh, so that my that's never going to change. I'm sure this David Cornsweet guy is really good. He looks good. I, he definitely fits the part. Um, but I've never seen any of his work. But I had never seen any of Henry Cavill's either before he played him. So I uh, I have been so far back in the chat. But anyways, um, I see Joey's here, and he said he wants my sweater right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to so wear funny. that into the fight. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> he wants to wear that. He's going to say, Rod, read this. <laughs> um, shoot, I should have gotten that link. Folks, I have the link now for the, uh, the ticket sales for Joey and Rod's fight. The card is growing and growing. And uh, boy, Joey, I can't wait for you to let me know whether or not that thing that we were talking about is going to happen, because uh, that would be an exciting announcement right there. But uh, yeah, if you don't know, Joey's going to be fighting Rod from Pro Predatory Fins coming up in August in New York. I am going to be commentating that fight, and uh, it's going to be super exciting. And I have a, a code for ticket sales for it. Uh, the live tickets, when did you say they go on sale, Joey? I don't even know. Let's see if he answers because I'm not on the live chat. But uh, um, hmm. I know they're for sale already. So, yeah. But the pay-per-view is not for sale yet. Um, but it will be soon. And when it does, do it because you'll get to see your boy on there. Or in person if you go to the event. The event only holds, I think, like just under a 1,000 people. So not a lot of people are going to be able to be there in person. But, of course... Everyone in the world can buy it on pay-per-view, and that'll well, be great. Saw, Jamie said she was going to be there earlier, and she would like to meet me. Well, you will be there, too. And I said, okay. Yes, and indeed. And she said you, too, but she, I think she just wanted to meet me. Um, <laughs> so I've seen this question come through from Dalton Winchenbach. Uh, I was watching a video of yours. Can't remember the video. You said you don't run biological filters because you have common sense. Can you explain? I genuinely want to know. I don't think he's asking that to be rude, uh, but I don't run biological filters because I have common sense. I think that was in a video a few weeks back and you may or may not have worded it exactly like that, but I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't the podcast and it was Jason that said that about anoxic stuff? No. Don't put it on Jason. No, I, it was a video that I was not in. Because I saw somebody else say that, and I was like, I don't even recall him saying that, and I watched that video. I mean, I did the video on all the different filters. I don't remember saying I have common sense, and that's why I'd... I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm not disputing it. I may have said something, or maybe I'm not remembering what it was that I said, but I, I, don't, I don't recall saying I don't use 
biological filtration because I have common sense. That just seems weird to me. No, um, if you're if you're speaking, I don't I don't even know what it what kind of biological filtration you're asking about, um, whether that's matrix or bio balls or or anything like that. I mean, yeah. I do use all of that. I, I we use we have tons of it in all of these. We have the little ceramic balls that uh, that comes with the the custom aquariums tanks. I mean, I use that. I, I don't know. That's going to bother me. Not your comment, but what I said, that's going to bother me of what I said to make you think that or I think it might I have been wrong. misworded because I did see somebody else say that in the comment section of that video. And then somebody else came back behind and said, if you had listened to what he was trying to say, he did not say it that way. Uh, so we'll I see. do think it might have been something that was misunderstood like i don't think you actually said it and meant it that way all forms of filtration mechanical biological chemical i use all of them i use purigen i use max out i use uh matrix i use carbon uh for uh, on the chemical side the bio side i use like i said the ceramic balls um the saltwater tank has bio balls, old fashioned bio balls. Uh, and I use it in all of my canister filters too. So it, it's not, yeah, I, either yeah. you misunderstood me or I said it wrong or whatever. I don't know. Uh, you, you a think you <laughs> said, I think he was talking about how the biological media isn't always necessary because filter floss can be a biological filter as it grows bacteria. Does that bring a bell? No, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope I hope I answered you and didn't confuse you even more. Hey, KG Tropicals, I just wanted to thank you for an awesome advice about starting my own fish tube channel. I'm so proud to be part of this community. That's awesome. I, hey, everybody should have a channel. Why not? It's free and you never know. You might be the next Joey Mullen and be fighting in New York, a big giant other guy from New York that... I would never, ever get in a ring with. <laughs> Joey has balls of steel. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't get a ring with Joey either. So, hey, there you go. Uh, Jose de Villa said, you said the bio wheels and the marine land filters don't make sense. I don't think they make sense. They're just like a waterfall. They don't even spin after a while. They just sit there. <laughs> yeah. I don't like those. I do not like those at all. I... I mean, I think they're kind of neat to, it looks like a paddle boat and you look back there if, they if like they're spinning. Waterfall. They don't spin. If they're spinning. And that's the thing. So many times they stop. And I really do. I, I remember Jason speaking. Uh, Jason's not a fan of those bio wheels. Um, and I remember him saying in our episode of the Tank Talk podcast all about hang on the back filters, he, him basically begging Marineland, stop it get those off of there. We don't need them. Um, and you know, maybe I was, and I don't know, I'm going to watch that video though, because I, I really want to know what it was that I said. Uh, Michael Lawson came back and uh, came in with a $5 super chat with nothing attached to it. Just here's my money. Thank you so much for that. Mac 22. I have a DIY CO2 setup in one of my tanks. Just find the plants grow better. Uh, well, quicker. Anyway, there's definite fact to that. I mean, that, that is an absolute truth. Um, I don't know anybody that's in a hurry for their plants to grow, though. That's the thing, you know. I mean, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Mac22. You're absolutely right. Most aquascapers are not, not aquascaping a tank that has to grow in by next Monday because that's when the party is. Or so, you know what I mean? Like most people are like, okay, I'm going to plant this and it's going to grow in its own speed and, and, and that's going to be that. And if it takes a little bit longer because there isn't CO2, then so be it. Um, I am not against CO2 in the slightest. I'm just not somebody that uses it because I haven't found it to be something that my planted tanks benefit from. I'd rather just not use it, but uh, you know. It could, I'm not saying that 
it's bad to use if somebody is using it. I just don't want that extra hassle. I'd rather just grow it without it and have a beautiful tank without it. That's true. Uh, Jason Guarino, I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong, but I can barely see because I'm blind. Have you guys thought about doing plant bundles as a beginner? We have. It can be intimidating looking at your website wanting all the things. We absolutely have. Um, I'm waiting to get approval from Tropica to be able to do that uh, because what we would like to do is offer a bundle and at a at a small discount. Um, and so we're working on that. That, that is going to be coming in the very, very near future. Um, and we'll have things like beginner rhizome plant bundle, mm -hmm. beginner plant, uh, stem bundle, beginner tissue culture bundle, you know, moss bundle, stuff like that. Yeah, we'll have those. Um, they're coming very, very soon. Bundles are tough uh, because we've got bundles on the website that are not plants. Uh, it's usually chemical type stuff that we do in bundles. And that's like a completely separate inventory. It, it's tough to keep up with all that, but we're working on it and, and we will have it for sure. Uh, King of DIY gifted 20 memberships. Good Lord. He wow. wants he wants me to be in such a good mood in August when I go up there to commentate <laughs> that fight. He, You know what, Joey? I'm just going to tell you something. Well, we keep getting all kinds of memberships. That's crazy. Hey, listen. Rod hasn't gifted one membership on my channel. I'm just saying, hey, if you're campaigning <laughs> for somebody to be on your side that's supposed to be neutral, <laughs> we know we're on the same page, right, Joey? We well, ain't got to worry about that. But thank you so much for that. Aquarium background tape, should I stop using lead weights on plants? Oh, yes. Why? Because I just, they... I've never had good experience with lead weights, down, having them down in the substrate. Yeah, it keeps them down there, but I feel like it... You shouldn't need them it, in the substrate. It's sub, it, it, what is that? Oh my gosh, that's That's scary. called a car. I know, but I saw that <laughs> shadow and I was like, oh my gosh. No, I just feel like it suffocates them from growing, you know? So once, if you're talking about using them planted down in the substrate, no, don't do that. But if you're just keeping them temporarily in your tank to kind of stay down there until you do plant them, then they're fine. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of vendors are going to ship them to you yeah. with a, a little lead band around it to keep them in a bundle. And that's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I, I'm not going to sit here and have an argument with you about it because I haven't found I them to be a like huge them. problem because I understand the frustration of not being able to get those little bastards to stick down in yeah, there. Yeah, but that's the important but part of planting an aquarium before you put fish in it. Let them be down in the substrate, let the roots grow into the substrate, get established before you stick fish in there to pull them up and yank them out. I mean. Okay. Yeah, okay. I said what I said. Um, but hey, listen, aquarium background tape, you know, you got both answers here. so. What you have to do is pick which one of us you like best and take that person's advice. <laughs> you got to choose. You got to be one side or the other. Lefty one, <laughs> lefty, I almost said one, two, three, four, five. Lefty three, who cares about all the numbers? Hey, oh, lefty. wait, I forgot about this. 45 months, let's go. He's one of the uh -huh. longest members. Um, not the longest lefty, but, uh, but one of, I think he's probably top, 15 as far as length of time uh oh um she's in the top five though lefty i'm just saying got a little competition oh, yeah. going on there because I, I had to buy a membership to our own channel to our own channel <laughs> i was like oh. yeah uh mike howe still remains the reigning yes. longest member that is of the, the channel fish tank barn fish tank barn uh allison dalton gifted five memberships leslie perry gifted five memberships that's like 33,000 that have it, been donated we've tonight. We've had a lot donated tonight. Thank you, everybody. That With Joey's 20 and then like 20 from everybody else, that's that's awesome. So many people are going to get to see our video, uh, our extra video on Sunday. And what we're doing here, folks, I just want to tell you this little news flash here. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I have to say this. Uh, Cody asked, what are memberships for? And Joey said, mostly nudes of John, sometimes extra fish stuff. 
It's true. <laughs> hey, you know, you want to see what's going on down there? The, the Stop. <laughs> you don't have to go. Stop. He, he I didn't say it. Joey did. About shoulders. I didn't say it. Joey did. <laughs> Your chest. Uh, no, what it is, is we, we provide extra content for our channel members every Sunday uh, when we do a, a list video or a video. That, uh, we, most of our Sunday videos are not project videos. They're some type of tutorial or, you know, explanation or something like that. We have the, some coming up. Yeah, the well, but those will be for Saturday. Yeah. But uh, what we do is we provide more on that topic to members. Uh, we've been doing that for a few months now. Uh, we've got tons and tons of members videos that are on there that are not available to uh, to just the, the regular public. Um, so that's what they're for. And, and it's really, you know, I'm not asking anybody to do this, but it's a way to support the channel. Mm. You know, if you don't wanna order from us for whatever reason, I'm not gonna beg you to. Uh, you don't wanna you know, you just want to, you want to be a supporter of the channel. It's an opportunity to do that, to take that support to the next level. And you get, a, you get extra little things for it. Um, like those Sunday videos. And we started doing a new thing and we've had positive feedback about it. Um, we're not doing the Sunday videos exactly the same as what we do the public video, because the public video, if we just talk, our videos would be an hour and a half long uh, because neither Lisa or I know how to shut our mouths. Obviously, I don't. But once you get her going, she don't stop oh either. Oh, my gosh. Like that one last week, I just went on and on and on Sunday about the 90-gallon. Uh, yeah. And then you had to go and correct me at the end that it wasn't a 90-gallon. Oh, yeah, that's true. It was a 55. But, hey, you know, like, it still oh, sounded yeah. good. Whatever. But what we do is we do not have a script for the members videos. So if we're talking about what's the best fish for 240 gallon aquarium, it's just me or Lisa talking about what our favorite fish for that size tank would be. That was last week's video. Um, and it's just raw. It's the, it looks the same, but it's just a raw talk. And, and the way I want to, the, the way I like to describe it is, we're just sitting down talking to our friends. That's what it's like. Instead of being this very formal kind of professional thing, which we're professional, but it's more laid back you and more casual. You see the goofy side. <laughs> you see and I leave the goofy all side. of Lisa's bloopers I know, in. Thanks. Like you did that one video or whatever. I don't know. What was it? Uh, one of the podcasts I did with you. You wanted to go. Oh yeah, you had to go pee, and I and forgot I was like, to. I gotta go pee. <laughs> And you left it in there. You were supposed to edit that out. Forgot to like, delete that geez. part. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, so now I'm extra cautious what I say because sometimes I slip and I say things that I would not want to be, you know. Foul language, not controversial YouTube. things. Oh, sometimes <laughs> it's that too. Oh, well, okay, sure. <laughs> but yeah, let's be honest. Oh, Leslie Perry said, bring back tanks of our lives. I'm begging here. We've thought about doing one one or two like future like tanks of our lives in the future i because we are older you know i've said it so many times that is some of the most fun i've ever had making youtube videos in my life well in the last 11 years um i've never had more fun than that it was so much fun i would love to do it um the old Fred Durst look just isn't going to be the same with the beard, beard now. That's because Even though age. he has a beard now, Fred Durst. But that's the point of it being in the future, you know? Yeah, and I wasn't trying to look like Fred Durst in that. It was just, that's what everybody said. And I understand it, the backwards hat and all that. But anyway, I, you know what? The thought of bringing back Tanks of Our Lives has never left me. I love the idea. I would love to do it. Um, stay tuned. Maybe maybe we will. Uh, Oinkmaster, thank you for the Tank Talk podcast. A top tier dream for me would be attend a master class run by the four people. Most for my endless joy, you both and primetime. Aww. She's so oh, sweet. I love her. Yeah, you're you're too much. I can't wait to meet her sometime this year. 
hopefully somewhere, we do. Somewhere. We're going to meet you somewhere. You got to go to one of the Aqua that, That's That's where you'll find us. Even though, well, I don't know. I think I know where she lives, but I'm not going to say. Of course, I know where Ed lives. It's in the name, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we're probably closer to Ed than we are her. But we're still like nine hours away from Ed. But anyway, Tim Russell said um, he's talking to Joey. He said Tamar Tamara's trolling video the other day was great. LOL. I watched that video and it was hilarious because, you know, how I've been getting lately with the oh comment Lord. section, like what that one guy said about how to pronounce cichlids. So that she was, did a video and it was hilarious. And I, I had to let her know. I thought it was funny too, but yeah, I've been getting on the comment section a little bit lately. I would I, love to find that comment. I got it. I actually screenshotted it. I was going to stick it up on my story, but you texted it to me. I can probably pull oh, it up here so I can read it because or, I, or you can read it. Um, Gosh, I, I was really upset that day, wasn't This I? might oh, be. Oh, here it is. I found it. Do you want me to read it? This might be the dumbest <laughs> comment. Oh, are you going to read it? Uh, well, I don't have it. Oh, okay. Because I'm not hooked up to Wi-Fi. So. All right. Well, I'm not going to print it. I'm not going to say. I'm going to have to bleep out or say the. Yeah. So River M. Crat 3683. And I think this is a troll, too, by the way. This guy can't be serious. He said, G D. I can't take you seriously pronouncing cichlid wrong. What the F is a sick lid? That particular fish, even though now cultivated in Africa, is of Italian descent. The Italian CI has a ch sound, making that particular fish a chicklid, not a cichlid. <laughs> And I responded back because I was, I was having a moment and, you know, yeah, I said, since you're so intelligent and know so much about cichlids, why don't you make a video about them? And while you're at it, shove it up your A, <laughs> Lisa. So, yeah, you got to love the comment section. And if you're going to troll, I'm going to troll you back. I mean, read her shirt. That's all you got to do. Read her shirt and you'll know what you're dealing with. Ian Harrell, I've been watching replays the last two years. Super busy. No, so never have the chance to catch the live. Uh, hello. Hope y'all are having a great night. Just happened to be on YouTube at the right time. Awesome. Uh, hopefully you're still around to have been able yeah. to hear us uh, respond to you. Thank you. For that, glad you were able to catch us live. That's awesome. Janice Lundberg, when will the heaters be back in stock? 47, exclamation point. Uh, all what? Of, what? Which heaters? I don't handle our inventory anymore. That's handled by my inventory manager. But which heaters? Who's sitting across from me which right heaters? now. Uh, she didn't say. It said 47, exclamation point. We don't have any 47 watt heaters. I know that. No. Um, now... Janice, certain, oh, she might be asking about the titaniums or the Aquatop are, GH. Yeah, because we're uh, phasing some out. So be specific so I can answer that question for you. Uh, we have basically moved everything over to the Sea Chase because they're the best, period. Yeah. Um, so some of the heaters that we have had in the past i i'm a really really big fan of the titanium aquatops they're awesome um but for a lot of reasons we're we're phasing the i don't know for for certain that we're going to phase out the titaniums but it's very possible that in the near future that will be the last aquatop product that we carry not because their products are bad. Their products are great. I, I'm a big fan of their products. There's other things that have me uh, wanting to phase their products out. I was just going to say that. Um, and it's not the fault of the product. Oh, no. Not at all. So, yeah. So, it's 930, lady. Look oh, at she that. she said 47 months, not 47 heaters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, I, don't, I wasn't... 
I wasn't thinking you wanted to buy 47 heaters. If you wanted to buy 47 heaters, I'd be saying, listen, I'd love to sell you 47 heaters, but you should not be buying 47 heaters. You should be heating the room, whatever room it's in, right. because your power bill, you're going to have the power guy come to your house like came to ours the other day because <gasps> our transformer blew. Oh, I wish we had that <laughs> to show. He wasn't here, so he was off doing something silly or whatever. I was at the bank. And, yeah, whatever. Um, and so the dog starts barking. I'm like, what? And somebody's knocking on the, on the door. And I'm like, who the heck is here? And I go down and it's the electrical guy, electrician or whatever for the power company. And he said, uh, we noticed you weren't getting any power to the barn. And I'm like, what? We like, had yet to go out to the how, barn that day. How do, how do you know? Like, were these people watching <laughs> us or what? So they have, you know, the kind of equipment, you know, in the office to where they know what's going on everywhere. And if someone's not getting power and they haven't heard from us, they come out and they find out what's going on. So he said, I just want to let you know I was here before I went to look because, you know, we live in the country and it was, I think, more of a safety concern than anything very smart. for himself. So I said, oh, yeah, that's fine. Go look. And uh, so he went and he looked and he says, uh, you know, I, I don't think it it's not uh, something where we have to replace the meter. It's definitely going to be something a little bit more involved. So then he asked me, can you can you drive around? to get to the power line in the transformer behind our house with his truck. He wanted to know where the, um, what was it called? The septic tank. Septic tank was, so he didn't smash it or something. Because it's one of the so big heavy. power trucks. Yeah. I said, well, I don't know. So I call John and he tells me where it is. So I tell the guy, so he goes around another way. But he goes out there, he climbs up there and he, he fixes it. All the power had to be off, but not in the fish house because we have a totally different power um, bill for that. So anyways, he turns everything off and uh, fixes it real quick, comes back, and he brings this, like, these two thick wire things. Like, I mean, it's thick, but the plastic on the wire was gone it was in half, and we're talking about something like three times the thickness of this. The metal that was around the wire was... The rubber that was around the wire. Yeah, all of Plastic. it was completely off, fried off. He said that it had fried up on the transformer. And immediately, I'm like, oh my God, is that a fire hazard for us, you know, like in the house? And he was like, it wouldn't have been for in the house, but it definitely would have caught fire up there and there are trees and stuff not too far from it so i was like oh my gosh you're thank you so much for fixing it so it had to have been a massive boom and uh probably a nice little firework display on top of that power power pole but it's probably 65 70 feet from our house so i wouldn't have worried about it burning the house down but it would have been a scary thing if you were yeah. standing out there for sure Tim Russell said, I don't know about you guys, but my power bill has been outrageous the last couple of months. I'm on Albemarle Electric, though. We are, too. And I even asked him that. I said, so you fixed the problem. Our electric bill isn't going to be as much now, right? And he laughed. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> Blake Robinson, uh, keep getting blocked from Super Chats, no matter what I do. But I love you guys and would love to order some crips. Is sand okay for the substrate? Yeah, Absolutely. And definitely. I do not know why. You would be blocked from Super Chats. I apologize for that. I do not have any kind of control over that. If we had blocked you, which we would not do for a member, uh, but if we had blocked you, you wouldn't have even been able to put that comment up. Not oh, just because yeah. I would have we don't block you. People. I would have banned you. You wouldn't have been able to do nothing. Right, but <laughs> but we would not do that to members. I mean, I suppose no. we could if it was the something really egregious, but. Uh, no, but I don't no, know that, I mean, it's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't either. Uh, Joey said, "Ugh, Lisa's stories last as long as Tamara's. I'm already bored. You know what, Joey? You could shut up. Oh, my God, Joey. Shut up. Dude, say whatever you want to say to me. Don't read her shirt. That's all you got to do. <laughs> and you're going to be seeing her in, in a few months. So I don't care what kind of shape you're in. You want you, you want to look out for her. Lefty said, did y'all get struck by lightning or struck with lightning? 
I don't think there's it, no way that would have because there's trees over top of it. There's no way it would have. No, I, I don't think so. I, we had a, a lot of wind. Uh, a lot of wind is very normal here, uh, particularly this time of year. And it probably blew a branch, probably touched the line and pushed it and it popped. I don't know. I mean, it happened when I was asleep and I had I got up, did my thing and I went to the bank uh, and I I wasn't here. So I, I hadn't even been out to the barn. I didn't even realize that it was out. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, Joey said again, Flix 20, 20 at John. Show me more. Dude, you don't want to see this. We're going to see a lot of him, though, in August. <laughs> Joey's going to have to bear it all. That weigh-in day, am I going to be commentating at the weigh-in? Oh, boy, am I going to have some words to say. You're so funny. I, will, I won't. I really won't because every single person that gets up on that stage is going to look a heck of a lot better than I do. So <laughs> I wouldn't dare do that. But listen. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Scoopity Doodah said lost power three times in two months video of idea of how to prep and what to have on hand what is a priority i think I, I think he's saying that's a good video idea i've done several videos on that and let me just tell you this one of those new products what what one, one of the new products that we're going to be oh, it's yeah, not yeah. our own product it's not anything like that but one of the new products that we're going to be bringing in uh will help with that and it's going to be something that everybody's going to want because uh, they're awesome. And uh, but there's that. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you have the money generators, uh, a good way to never have your power ever go out again is to buy a generator. Because we bought generators last year when there was supposed to be a big storm. We even did a video about it. Mm. And uh, power has not gone out since. Now, of course, we're sitting here talking about the power being out to the barn the other day well we never even knew yeah. that it was out so as far as our house goes it's gone out for an hour at the most but the power but company usually is not so even that out here yeah they're really really fast they're just expensive we had one day there was a real bad storm last year and i dread storms out here just because of the mess that i'm gonna have to clean up in our yard mm. but there's we have huge sycamore trees in our yard and a giant branch fell off of one. We have a power line. It's all overhead utilities out here. And we have a line that runs from the street all the way to the back of our property, which is the pole that yeah. the guy had to go up the other day. And a big branch fell off during that storm and landed on that power line and was basically sagging that power line all the way down. I could have walked up and grabbed it. And I was like, Man, I'm afraid. I don't know what to do about that. It wasn't that way for two hours. And the power company was driving by because they were out there because of the storm. They saw it. They pulled over, took it down. And then I, I was like, what? This is amazing. But uh, Tim Russell said we lost power a couple months ago for like six hours. Probably the same time we did. <laughs> hey, I, mean, I don't think he lives that far from us. Six hours is... I passed Goodies. I know where Goodies is now, Tim Russell. <laughs> That's the one on the corner, isn't it? No. It's on Virginia, where the other Dollar General is, across from that one, down. Oh, okay. There's like 12 Dollar Generals on there, but... I know. Anyway. If, if you were lost in a desert in Arizona somewhere, and you're crawling around looking for water, you wouldn't find it, but there would be a Dollar General in the desert, <laughs> just because they're everywhere. You'd find that before water. Can I pre-order that mystery product? I have no generator funds. Oh, uh, soon, not yet though. I would love to do that, but uh, but we wouldn't have any way of doing that. I mean, we we could, but I don't even know. No, I don't know when we're gonna get it, um, but it's it's gonna be a good one, and um, it's a product that we actually carry right now, just a different brand and a very very much better version of it. Um, and I have not seen another manufacturer do this style of this product. So stay tuned. It's going to be good. Uh, yeah. It's 939, and I don't know if we are oh. stepping on Oink Master's boyfriend. 
but I don't want to. So yeah, you so, got to sign us off here, lady. Yeah, I guess um, if Ed's streaming, then if Zen could put that up, that would be wonderful. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And as soon as John finishes uh, the sump system in my tank, that video will go up. <laughs> so it's on him now, not me. Um, just kidding. I'll help you, you know. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, everybody, mods, everybody who super chatted and gifted memberships. You guys are awesome. And we appreciate everybody that was in chat and just here lurking and all that good stuff, too. So, yeah, thank you are so you much. Are you going this weekend, Lisa, uh, Zen Ginger said? What's this weekend? I don't know. She ain't going nowhere this weekend. Uh, I don't know. Then I'll message you. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, thanks you guys so much. And we will see you next Thursday. Bye.